Okay, hi guys, welcome back to the shed. Today I'm gonna to be doing a review of the Pointing x 2 V2 antenna. In summary, it's a directional antenna that's designed for mobile broadband, covering the, all the frequencies from 2G to 4G, excluding 5G, which Pointing have created a new model for. And we're gonna be looking at this. So what I'm gonna be looking at is what's in the box, what comes with it, uh, and stuff like that. Then we're looking at the specifications uh, in general, but also those that are particular to me for obviously why I bought it. Then I'm gonna be doing some tests to see whether what it actually does, how it performs in reality, is whether it meets those specifications that Pointing have said. And then we're gonna install it on my wall, at my house, and then we're going to do a conclusion as to uh, just how good it is uh, and whether you should go and buy it. Okay, so let's get on with it. Okay, so what's in the box? Well, the antenna, kind of obviously, more about that later. Hole and wall mounts, well, kind of obvious really. And, uh, well, I guess some very basic instructions. And um, that's it. Okay, well, more about that later. Okay, so, the antenna, it's not bad looking really. It's, uh, it looks rather like a large smoke alarm. It comes with five meters of uh, cable included with SMA connectors on the end. Of course, there's two, remember, because it's a MIMO antenna. From a build quality perspective, um, it, it's a bit plasticky. Um, it, it doesn't inspire me with confidence to begin with, um, but I don't know, there's just something about it that doesn't make it seem very good. But, you see, the thing is, <sighs> I'm used to these. This is a Catrine antenna that is a standard manufacturer for the mobile phone industry. This is rather an old one, obviously, which is a bit of a doorstop. I got it on eBay for 15 quid. Um, much heavier, much stronger build quality. So maybe I'm a bit, a bit biased, but we'll see whether... Uh, whether I am biased by the performance later on, so uh, but um, so I'm a little bit nervous, but we'll see later on. Okay, specifications-wise, it covers about 700 meg to 2700 meg, which is all the mobile phone bands from 2G to 4G. It's got a peak gain of 9 dBi's at about 2.5 gig. I'm most interested in the 800 megahertz band, as I said before. And if you look at the specification sheet, which is really good, you can download the sheet online, which is way better than any other manufacturer that I found. So it's a really good plus point from point two. Anyway, if you look at that and do a bit of interpolation, which is what I did, you can work out at about 800 megahertz the gain is about 7.5 dBi, the horizontal 3 dB beam width about 40 degrees, which is really directional. The uh, cable loss gain is about 0.35 dB per meter. So overall, really good antenna specs, it's looking really good. Of course, that's in theory. I want to know what it's like in practice. So, in practice then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my handheld spectrum analyzer here, the RF Explorer. It's really good. You can get it on Amazon for about £200. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to take some scans of the uh, low band, kind of the 800 megs, mid band 1800 megs, and high band 2600 megs. I'm going to do some scans with the standard included antennas here. They're about 2 dBi gain. Then I'm going to swap them for the antenna ports on here and do the same scans and uh, see what the differences are. I know where the local sites are because I'm a geek. I know where they are. Uh, I got some information off the CellMapper website, which was really useful. So I can go and camp up near a local site, do the scans and uh, see what it's like. Okay, so here we are out in the uh, summer sun. I'm going to test the pointing x V2. We can see a, a local cell site there. Okay, so on the 806 megahertz, which is Vodafone's carrier here for LT800 at that local site. We're getting NEG 44.5, which is not that surprising considering we've got direct line of sight and we're very close to that site. In the uh, mid band here at 1836, we've got NEG 41. Rising to NEG 37, NEG 39 and a half. Okay, here in the high band, that's 2.6 gig. EEUK's carrier is 2662.9. And uh, we're getting neg 58. 
Okay, here we are testing the pointing at the high band. Let's see what we get. Okay, so at the high band, NIG 52.5, which is a gain of 6.5 dB. Now earlier I did get NIG 51, which is a gain of 7.5 dB, which is exactly what we reckoned it would be. So that's pretty impressive really. Okay, so in the mid band, 1836. Get NIG 33.5, which is a 7.5 dB gain. Spot on what I suggested it would be. Okay, so at the low band, 806. Neg 29.5. That's a 15 dB gain. What a result. Okay, so here I'm back at the same place as last time. Um, previously, I did a measurement of the pointing antenna with the spectrum analyzer to see what the gain was compared with an omnidirectional antenna of the gain of a frequency band. But in terms of our data throughput speeds on a 4G mobile broadband, that's not truly indicative of one. It doesn't give us a true idea of any improvement. And that's because with 4G, what we need to be doing is looking at improvement in signal level of a particular site, not the whole frequency band. And a spectrum analyzer can't really do that. To do that, what we need is a proper engineering handset. like the Samsung S3 Thames here we've got here. It runs a firmware and software version. Uh, you can get these from a number of manufacturers, but this one's running the Thames software by a company called ASCOM. Okay, so what we're gonna do is measure the RSRP of that site there's PCI to give it its proper terminology. And we're gonna use the uh, external antenna from the spectrum analyzer connected to the external antenna ports there and then we're going to do the same with the pointing antenna and that should hopefully give us a, a comparison of the signal levels of that particular site and then that's a true indicator of the gain of the antenna that is more representative of what it will do for our through 4G broadband speeds. You can see the RSSI there of NEG56 and NEG56, NEG52 that's the actual overall signal level of the whole band. That's the sort of signal level we would have received with the spectrum analyzer. So we can, you can see the levels here, NEG82, the PCI374. Now that's the signal level we need as a comparison. So we'll be looking with the pointing for a PCI of 374, and that's what we'll be comparing. Okay, so we can see the downlink channel 1861.1. Again, RSSI NEG58, which is what we'd expect for the whole band from that site, similar to what we saw on the spectrum analyzer. And NEG80 for the uh, PCI374. So at the moment, we've got a PCI32 on mobile network code 23420 uh, with an RSRP of NEG70. That's with the, uh, the stub antenna from the spectrum analyzer again. Now we can swap over to the pointing. Because now we've got the pointing connected by the cables at the back. see what differences we get. Okay, so we're still on the uh, LTE high band 266 2.9. Our side of neg 52, no, neg 51, neg 48. Okay, got up to neg 77 now, which is a good improvement. Good game. So there we are, 1861 again. See neg 66 there, I mean that's a massive jump again. Okay, so this is PCI 32, and we've got an RSRP of 45. 44, so a really good game there. Okay, so the install's complete. It went pretty easily, really. Um, not as high as I prefer, because uh, I'm a bit of a wuss and I don't like ladders very much. So, uh, not as high as I'd want. The only, thing, the only thing that I would say is that this bracket here is a bit, not very strong, and under wind, it'll, uh, it's quite easily gonna flap. It's, it's not the strongest. Pointing could have done a better job with that. All we need to do now is to do a bit of panning, a bit of tilting, perhaps, 
to get to the right uh, the right azimuth that we'd want and uh, that would be it. Okay, so in conclusion, the pointing X-Pol 2 V2 antenna there, well, it performed better than I expected, actually. In terms of gain, well, that depends under what conditions, under how you test it, but also how you interpret the results as well. Now, the way that I did it, well, I got kind of 8 to 28 dBi, which is a really good result, but that doesn't really matter so much the exact numbers, does matter though is that it's all in line with what pointing specifications say and that's great because that gives you a warm fuzzy feeling of confidence in their products but again at the end of the day what we're really interested in is whether the antenna improves our mobile broadband speeds and if it does by how much well the simple answer to that question is yes, it does improve our mobile broadband speeds. As to how much, well, there's so many variables that it's difficult to say. In my case though, I was always going to have my broadband router here in my garage here, and it would either be with its own antennas or with the external antennas, and obviously I've bought this product now, so it will be the external antennas. But when I tested the two with and without the external antennas, I was getting 10 megabits per second without them and 35 megabits per second with the pointing external antenna. So that's a massive difference in speeds. But actually, in fact, when I tested it with this test phone that I used for my surveys, this was only getting about one and a half meg um, with the phone itself. And when I then swapped it to the external antennas, uh, it gave 35 meg as I said, so that's a huge improvement, 30, over 30 megabits per second improvement. So those sort of results speak for themselves. So in summary, I really like this product. Uh, maybe I was biased uh, to begin with some comments about cable losses and build quality. Whether they become an issue is something that you'll only really tell in time. But uh, yeah, overall, it's a really good product. Um, it's worth the money that you spend on it on Amazon or whatever. So uh, thumbs up and I highly recommend it. Okay, thanks for watching guys. If you're interested in anything to do with mobile phones, wireless tech, mobile broadband, that sort of thing, home Wi-Fi, then please do the usual, press like, subscribe and all that. Plenty more vids to come. And uh, thanks for watching.